peace. I have a perspective. Do you think you can tell if you have a good therapist or counseling system? Oh, my nose itches. Like, do you recognize if you start out with a goal or tools? Or do you just go there to talk? Because there's so many aspects of it. And you have to be open and if you're made. But do you ever realize, like, sometimes you can talk and talk and talk. And never get anywhere besides talking. Which you're getting somewhere because you're venting. But if you vent. Like you can complain. And complain and complain and never do anything about it. But when are you going to learn the tools. Of what you need to do. When are you going to understand. That healing. From depression. Anxiety. Etc. You know I'm only speaking from perspective of myself. I can't speak for anyone. That it starts with forgiveness. Forgiveness of yourself, of who you were, forgiveness of the person, place, thing, situation. And if you start out knowing, look, you're in therapy, but our goals and a tool is forgiveness. And we'll talk about it and I'll help you, like the therapist or whatever, can help you analyze the scenario if you might are having trouble figuring it out, which that's kind of what it's for. But if you're just sitting there talking and then you realize your therapist or whatever you want to call it, counselor, I don't know, more therapist, but whatever, is just reading by a book and like really trying to figure out what's wrong. And then they're just all of a sudden diagnosing you instead of giving you the tools and the keys to work through it. Are you aware of that, you think? Because speaking for myself and observing situations in my life. Sometimes you can go to therapy for a year and not really get shit done besides you talked about your problems. And, I mean, everything is is always meant to be in some sense. But And sometimes talking about stuff brings out other stuff. But when you don't have the tools you need, you're really just reliving and talking about your problems. And you're victimizing yourself because you're, you're doing that and then you get a diagnosis and it's like you're justifying it and I, I do believe we get diagnosis and they're meant to be in a moment but within reason and limited because you can't always want to be depressed you can't always want to be that because and not everything works for everyone too but like think about it we can't live in the past everyone makes mistakes have empathy and compassion figure out Maybe what have drove that person to it. Or think about this. I'm not calling anything stupid. But this is how what I say to myself. You can't get stupid. Like something that you can't make sense of. You can't dwell and try to keep making sense of it. And then getting obsessive and then negatively obsessive. You have to figure out a way to let it go. And it's like reprogramming habit. It's a habit of reprogramming. Like your mindset you get depressed. You do get anxiety. You do. But what are you telling yourself? What are your worries? What are your feels? What is energy? What did you discern? What keys and tools are you using? And did you learn about how you were raised in your programming and how your parents or whoever your guardians were? Did you learn those tools? And like, we cannot live in the past. We can't dwell in the future. Dwelling in the future causes anxiety. Living in the past causes depression. Being in the now moment. But yeah, you can't sweep stuff under the rug and not think about it. But you push it out. You feel it. And then you flush it. You know? You don't have to stay constipated to those situations to always be depressed. Because sometimes people think they go to therapy, counseling, whatever. And you need it. But sometimes people go, just like sometimes people go to church. And they think that means something. If there's no intention behind it, you're just going. Are, are you going to say you're depressed and have anxiety? Or are you going to literally work on it? Because what you tell yourself, you will be. What you give your power, your energy, your focus on will be. You eventually might get tired of your own bullshit and say, fuck it, I'm done. I'm like, oh, I'm so over it and work through it on your own or shoot you can talk to a stranger and have therapy realistically but like do we ever think about that like um and I'm sure there are great counselors and therapists out there but 
Do you ever think about that? Because sometimes they only have a lot of amount of time and they do it through like the book or way I think things need to be updated. I think some stuff is outdated. And sometimes people just do it by the hour to get paid. Then are they doing it for the title and they partially want to help or to get paid? I mean, and that's kind of like a contradiction because we were taught to go to college to get a degree and a certificate to get paid. But, you know, you get me? Like, when are you going to stop saying I'm depressed? Be like, man, I lived in the past. Like, when do we realize that the words we choose to tell ourselves are what we are manifesting ourselves to be? When do we understand energy, focus? People might not want to call it energy. What do we, when we focus our attention on, that's energy, realistically, but perspective for anyone. You know, do you realize if you have a good therapist or counselor, because... What do you give your power to? And if somebody hurt you, you're still holding on an attachment to that person. If you can't find forgiveness for yourself, who you were, and for that person, you're victimizing yourself, and you're telling yourself the same story, and that story, you're making it your reality, or now, when in the moment, we can not be who we were like five seconds ago. I wonder if anyone recognizes that or do they go to counseling or therapy because they were told to and they think because they're going, they're actually using it as an excuse. They're working on their problem. No different than any addiction. Addiction doesn't have to be drugs or anything. It's the, you know, it's, it's like a kind of a habit too. Like some people go there and they think that it's healing them when they're really not working on their problem. They're just doing what society has told them to do and they think it works when you really have to work on yourself. Are you going just to say you went to justify that you have a problem and st still victimize yourself? Are you realizing and trusting your intuition if you have somebody, a good therapist? Are you going so you can actually work on yourself? You know what I mean? Because I can have a good conversation with someone for an hour in what a year of therapy could take but that's depending on the person the receptivity and the openness and no one's perfect we're all gonna make mistakes it's just all about habits stopping ourselves, not saying that working on it really hard it's so easy to say and hate ourselves and be depressed and have anxiety and be a negative but what about just loving ourselves? Some people might think that's harder to do. But why don't we watch and stay aware of what we say? Stay aware of how we treat people. Stay aware of discerning and being open to take accountability if we make mistakes. Forgiving our past self. Forgiving our self, period. And knowing we can change. And we don't have to be a victim of our circumstance or a victim of what we tell ourselves or what some therapist told us because they're going to get paid through some other resource or I mean not always but I'm just you know example like I don't know